This shrouding your GPU mod has been around for years. This time I wanted to take this mod a step further by actually designing and creating a custom made shroud to make the card look much more complete. Hi, I'm Leo and let's have a look what it is all about. This EVGA card is using EVGA's ICX3 cooler which includes some copper heat pipes, relatively large heatsink and trim fans in a size of 92mm. In this video we will be deshrouding the card and replacing the three fans with something else. Here at the bottom of the card you can see the three connectors where the fans are connected. There is also another connector on the other side of the card which is meant to be used for RGB lights. The shroud itself is attached with the 8 screws and the fans are attached with the 4 screws per single fan. For the new fans I've chosen Arctic P12 fans because they are very popular and they have a very solid performance price ratio compared for example to the Noctuas. Obviously you can use any fans you prefer if you wish so. During the design of this project I suddenly came across that somebody has already been designed a dual fan bracket for this EVGA card. The bracket is so well designed that I'm sure the person behind this is a professional. After finding the dual fan bracket I have decided to design a custom made shroud to hide everything what is underneath it and make the car look much more complete. Please notice that not all 3D printers can print as large objects as these are, so before printing make sure that the model you are using can actually print such large objects. I will link the printing service I have been using down in the description of this video. The total costs of these two parts is around 30 dollars or 30 euros depending on who are you ordering it from. After removing the original shroud and the stock fans we can see how well the fan bracket is sitting on the heat sink of this card. It's absolutely amazing job and the person behind this project definitely deserves at least a thank you from everyone who decides to use it for their own cards. This bracket is meant to be attached with the same screws used by the original shroud. Please remember to attach the fans first onto a bracket before attaching the bracket onto card's heat sink. And here is the final look of this card. As you can notice I've left the cable unplugged into the card's PCB because I couldn't find the proper adapter to do so. Instead I'll connect the card into the motherboard.
obviously this mod has made the card much more thicker so if you are short on a free space in your case you can consider using the slim fans and maybe removing the outer shroud or adjusting the shroud based on the height of your fans. Installing the card back into my case wasn't easy at all. I had literally had to move the card a millimeter per time to make it fit properly. After spending some time moving the card back and forth, I was finally able to install it properly. After the installation, the PC has booted without any issues. Let's have a look at the benchmark results. During these benchmarks I run them long enough to stabilize the low temperatures. As we can see here there isn't much of a difference compared to the stock cooler. Although I have to admit that I was a bit disappointed after seeing such a high temperatures with this modded cooler. I'm not exactly sure what might can be the reason behind this but at least one of the reasons can be that the cooler is not tightened enough with the GPU which is relatively common issue and the other reason can be that there is not enough thermal paste between the GPU and the cooler and the three and probably the most important reason is that this fractal design mesh if I see case is relatively small especially considering that I'm using the AIO cooler in the front part of this case. I will absolutely redo this mod sometimes in the future with all these things have been taken into the consideration just to make sure that possible high temperatures are not caused by these issues. While the temperatures are almost equal, noise levels are something totally different. With these charts we can see that the new fans are actually spinning around 500 rpm less than the stock fans. Such a large rpm difference is absolutely audible regardless of almost any fans. I have also measured the hotspot and as we can see the temperatures are still relatively the same, there isn't much of a difference. Here are some noise level examples of the stock cooler and the D shroud mod as well. I want to thank everyone for checking out this video, my name is Leo and see you next time, bye bye.